two teams who are in the same city, Fulham versus Arsenal. That's a landing derby there. You've got West London versus North London. Fulham are currently seventh. Uh, they've played out six draws. They've won 11 games, lost nine, goal difference of plus four. Arsenal are sitting on top of the tree. 20 wins, three draws, three losses, and a goal difference of 34. They've scored 30 more goals than Fulham. And um, so if recent history is anything to go by, Arsenal enjoy playing this game. They seem to have won a lot of times at, the, at, at Craven Cottage <clears throat> in recent history. Yeah, it's, um, look, Fulham have been a UU team for the best part of the last four or five years, up and down, up and down. This season, they are comfortably staying in the Premier League. It's been a wonderful season for Fulham. Look, they are challenging for the European place. And you remember one of the last times they were in Europe, they went all the way to the Europa League final. I believe they yeah. lost to Atletico. Atletico Madrid, yeah. But that was under Royal Hotel. Yeah. Way back when. And I'm loving the job Marco Silva is doing. I think and a lot of us didn't expect much from him. We've seen him at Everton. We saw him at, was it Hull City? Hull City. Hull City. Hull no, Watford as well. Yes. Watford. So he house yeah, he's had a few, a few jobs. But look at how badly most of those jobs went. I believe two of those teams went down. Yeah. And Everton... Almost. <laughs> Everton, you know, he, he was the beginning of the slide that we are seeing now. But he's kind of rehabilitated his image. He's done very mm -hmm. well. Even Mitrovic, who we all thought that there was nothing he was going to. He started the season well. Injury has hurt him a bit. But look, they are quality team. You have players like Jao Palina doing such good jobs. Yeah. But he won't be around. He won't be though. around, luckily for us now. <laughs> and you have Manu who is now picking himself up. And look <laughs> at William. William is looking rejuvenated. Mm. We just spoke about him winning goal of the month. I'm sure if you told Arsenal fans after the first season he spent there, where he left, I mean, he even left money on the table. I think he himself was a bit embarrassed by how badly he performed. Mm. Went back to Brazil. That also didn't work out. He was kind of hounded out of the club by the mm -hmm. Corinthians, by the fans. You would think that Fulham signed him and think to yourself, why would they do that? But he's shown that there's still some quality there. He's still one of the better... He's proven to be one of the better wingers yeah. in the league, if I've been honest. <clears throat> and so it looks like every player there is get, they're getting something out of everyone. Even Andres Pereira, who was a man new, he's a solid Premier League player at Fulham. We didn't see much of that at United. So there's a lot of redemption acts in this Fulham team, but I just don't think they have enough for Arsenal. Mm. They, they, they worried Arsenal a bit in the first... Meeting, if you remember, I think it took a late goal yeah. from a corner to kind of yeah, Gabriel. Gabriel to yeah. push Arsenal over the edge. But I think Arsenal are a bit more settled. You know, the, the momentum is going. And look, after that win against Bournemouth, they probably think they can beat anybody in the world. The only fear for me is that they are a bit tired because of their Europa League game against Sporting. I mean, Arsenal's squad is not big. And we saw that almost no one got rest. Okay. I think Odegaard was probably the only player. <clears throat> First team player, I can think of Odegaard and Party were the only first team mm -hmm. players who got some rest. And I think Gabriel. maybe maybe Gabriel, yeah. exactly. So there wasn't too much rest for the first team players, and that bothers me because as far as I Fulham have had the whole week, you know, to rest, to prepare, and get ready for this game. So that could play in their way. So hopefully, Arsenal are able to finish the game in the first 60 minutes because they might not have much gas in the tank. And considering they have to host sporting on, on Thursday. Thursday they really need to get it done. I think right now the fixture congestion can catch up with them. And it might, they might need to sacrifice the Europa League if they want to win the league just because of how thin the mm. squad is. Okay. So they are looking at making some hard decisions because I think the more European games they play, that Thursday to Sunday turn around, and how thin their squad is, it could be a problem. And even United, who we'll probably talk about, I'm sure, a bit later, might be having the same problem as the Europa League progresses. Mm. Okay. Um Sydney, let's, let's talk at things from an Arsenal perspective. It's been a wonderful season for them. Five points clear at the top. They want to win this Premier League title. How should they approach this game at Fulham, knowing that Fulham themselves have been on a good run? They want to also make a statement this season. Look, I think <laughs> Arsenal, they should approach this game with a mentality to get it done as soon as possible. Because as Usu has said, the players are tiring. You can see it in some of their recent performances. Conceding two goals at home to Brentford, eh, to Bournemouth. Bournemouth, yeah. Bournemouth, Come on, going, almost losing, almost <laughs> almost losing. Managed to come out with a win at the end of the day, but that wasn't a typical Arsenal performance. Playing uh, away to Sporting, Sporting is a we see it's a better team mm -hmm. than than uh, Bournemouth, but they didn't give I Arsenal. I just to just interject. Their set piece defending recently has not been. Yeah, it's yeah. something that yeah. struck me. Yeah, yeah, and Oc Oc because against down. Sporting, I yeah, think they, they considered also, one from 
yeah. Sporting's first goal, goal was, was from a corner. So that just goes to show. And it, it, was, it wasn't like that earlier on in the season. Earlier on in the season, they looked as if they had their game plan when it comes to set pieces. When it comes to general defense, they looked as if they had it on lock and key. But right now, I don't know what's happening. Maybe mental fatigue, physical fatigue. No, it's, it's been a long season. They have done so well, very credibly well to get where mm, they are right mm, now. But mm. it seems as if they are losing a bit of sharpness when it comes to these little things. So if I were to be... At it, I will look to get this game done as soon as possible. The absence of Paulinho is going to be near to their benefits massively because that guy is just a one-man tank in that midfield, <laughs> going up and down, clearing whoever. And he seems to be a, 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 a bit skillful as well. It can be a, some, some nimble-footed touches he has in the midfield. So his absence will, and the, 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 the replacements for him, Chalo, Nathan Chaloba, who is mm. the worst of the Chaloba brothers. <laughs> uh, you have uh, Harrison Reed. You have Tom <laughs> Ken. These are guys who I don't think they have they are of, of a very good Premier League standard. So the drop off from Paulina to these guys will be huge. And Arsenal will be looking to to benefit from that, looking to put in pressure on these players. And Arsenal themselves are coming off of a good good run of form. There's a lot of uh, lot of confidence flowing through the veins of their mm. players. They are playing very good football. It seems as if all the changes Ateta is making is having a good effect. You put Trossard as strike is working out. You put in Jorginho, the much maligned jo Jorginho from <laughs> Chelsea. Put him in in place of Partey is working out. You put uh, I saw uh, Tomiyasu playing at left back yesterday. He looked very good at left back as well. We know him to be he can play both left left back and right back, but he seems to be more of a right back. But even playing at left back, it seems like it's also working. You bring in Rhys Nelson who hasn't been a fixture too much this season, injuries and all that. Yeah, he comes up, gets you a last minute winner. He had, a, big, he had a very big game against Bournemouth because he assisted the second goal. Mm -hmm. as well. Exactly. Coming on and having such a big a big uh, influence on the game. And you have the likes of Emil Smith coming mm -hmm. into the team. And it seems as if it's not too long before we see Gabriel mm -hmm. Jesus also back in the team. So. You, you mentioned Smith Rowe, and I mean, if, correct me if I'm wrong, but he seems to have dipped a bit. Of course, I know he had a bit of an injury, yeah. but he seems to have he barely played. He's barely season. played this season. He, has, he seems to he have has. dipped a lot. He has amongst the the, the Arsenal uh, young starlets who are yeah. proving themselves very valuable this season. I think he's the one who has dropped out a bit, but there's still time in the season. Sometimes, who knows? Uh, his his moment is now coming when it comes to the crunch period of the season because he hasn't played a lot. He's been rested. You know, he's still fresher than. These guys who have been a bit mm, battle hardened mm. over the course of the season. So uh, let's see what he can do as the as the other as the uh, games progress mm. to an end. So Great. I think Arsenal should look to get this game done quickly as possible mm. and then bring in some guys to freshen the legs of the players and look on to test the night. So, so finally, you talked about Arsenal's defending from set pieces and it being quite cagey. Do you think that Fulham would would want to exploit that? When you look at Fulham and how they've played this season, do you look like, do they look like a team that that can find that that next level or can employ that to to worry Arsenal? Oh, definitely. I mean, I think of the fact that you have someone like Mitrovic in the mix. Even his replacement, Carlos Vinicius, is a big guy. And you think of obviously both teams have centre backs in the midfield. They have some tall guys, and you have Andres Pereira and William whipping the ball in. It can, it could be a very if their set piece defender doesn't get better. A lot of teams will take advantage of it because we're in a situation now where teams are every team is doing their own routines taking advantage of their kind of because it's a marginal benefit and as someone said if you're a team that you are you don't have a lot of goals in you set pieces can always be a release valve if you can score 15 10 set pieces a season there's some tight games that are swung in your favor just by that yeah. you know so being weak on them is not a good thing and Arsenal need to fix that asap because there are a lot of teams that have a lot of height, a lot of big guys. And there's, because the ball is set right there, that's the easiest delivery any player is going <laughs> to get. Because these, these are professional players. If they can just put the ball down, get a run up, and swing the ball in, yeah. it's going to be... They get it wrong quite a lot, but more often than not, there'll be one or two that just lands where it needs to land. And you need to be the first to attack the ball. You need to defend it properly. You have to be wary of the second ball. So set pieces are a very... They're, they are integral part of the game in the sense that in the tightest of games, they could be the difference. Because, I mean, look at the Champions League final Madrid won to win La Decima. It was one set piece that Atleti didn't win the header the whole 90 minutes. Yeah. And that was it. That was it. So it just goes to show that even at the tightest of the, high, the highest of highest levels, it matters. Mm, all right. We'll see if Arsenal can uh, 
fend off Fulham, or if Fulham will cause the um, title challenges a bit of damage. Let's not forget that Man City are at Crystal Palace, so I'm sure they will also have an interest in that Arsenal encounter and, yeah. see, and see whatever happens to them in that game.